And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman, whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Israelites, it is time for headship and leadership in the Israelite community. In order to lead in the Most High's kingdom with the Messiah, you have to know how to lead. We have to learn how to build a strong community. In addition, learn how to take care of that community. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. The Most High has exiled his people for their disobedience. Serving your sentence in exile does not conclude a time to relax and get comfortable in your enemy's territories, nor does it mean to give up because of the curses. Some Israelites believe the Most High's requirement for serving time for our nation's iniquities is only to wait on the Most High to save them. Israelites, serving time is not only for you to sit back and wait on the Messiah to rescue you. Serving time means to repent of your sins and not repeat the same mistakes. While you are serving time in exile, you are to learn the lessons the Most High want you to master before he redeem his people. Before the Most High can redeem his people, Israelites must display their ability to obey the Most High and pass the test. The Most High is not going to put an end to the heathen's reign if his people cannot show their competence to lead. Israelites, it is important to examine the hardship we face daily. The Most High allow hardship to test you to promote you. Therefore, do not dismiss hardship in whatever form it comes. I view what is happening presently in the physical realm as a time to become independent from the heathens. In addition, a time to combine our efforts with the Most High to bring change in our communities. The scripture said, no man could save us. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. We have spent multiple generations joining forces with traitors of our community and bad leaders to clean up our communities. The scripture said no man or the work of the flesh could save us. That is why it is important to join forces with the Most High to bring the change the remnant of Israel desire. When we are on one accord with the Most High, we can begin the process of weaning off the heathens and the kingdom of darkness beast system. When a drug addict wants to get off drugs, he or she goes through a withdrawal process. During this process, the addict is confined to a place that will benefit in his or her success. In the beginning stage, the drug addict will crave the drugs. When the body do not get its daily dose of drugs that it has grown accustomed to taking, that individual body goes through a purging process. During this stage, the person can become extremely sick or even die. His or her body has become dependent on the drugs that the brain tell the flesh that it needs the drug to survive. If the proper treatment is not done, the individual could relapse. For multiple generations, Israelites try to find solutions to their problem by seeking their enemies for help and answers. In every generation, when the withdrawal process becomes difficult, our people relapse and fall into temptation of going to the beast system for provision. When the Most High saved his people from the Egyptian bondage, our ancestors began to reminisce of the food they ate while in bondage. The hardship they faced during the Egyptian bondage slit their minds. Collectively, they wanted to go back into bondage to eat all the unhealthy food their hearts desire. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel 
murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. The manna the Most High was providing for his people was not sufficient. Our ancestors prefer what the beast system was providing. Israelites in every generation have this unhealthy desire to be accepted by the heathens. I do not know when our people is going to realize that the heathens will never accept them. The Most High was testing our ancestors while they were in the wilderness of sin to see if they would obey him. On multiple occasions, our ancestors proved how disloyal they were towards the Most High. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. When our ancestors saw how challenging their journey to the promised land has become, they wanted to return to the land of bondage. They loved the false sense of security Egypt's beast system provide for them. Our ancestors were willing to trade the promised land for bondage. Israelites, we do not want to follow our ancestors' disobedient behavior if we want the Most High's provision and witness the Most High moving mountains on our behalf. The generation that complained against the Most High and refused to trust the Most High could not enter the Promised Land. But the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land, which the Lord sware unto their fathers that he would give us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. Likewise, to the Israelites in this generation who cannot separate from the beast system, shift their focus to repentance and seeking the Most High for provision will not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. It was not until our ancestors displayed that they would obey and trust the Most High, the time they spent in the wilderness ended. The Most High raised up Joshua to lead his people into possessing the promised land. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. In order to find independence from the beast system, we have to trust the Most High, follow his instructions. We need the proper leadership and headship in the Israelite community to move in the right direction. Israelites must wholeheartedly do what it takes to separate from the beast system. You must have a sincere heart to find success. At such a time like this, we cannot operate with a double mind. The scriptures inform us that a person who is double-minded will be unstable in everything he or she does. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you could change your perception of the beast system, you will soon realize that the beast system has nothing of value to offer you. In addition, the beast system brings nothing but destruction and pain. You are eating unhealthy food, drinking poisonous water, breathing polluted air. The workers of iniquity in leadership position have sacrificed the people to the kingdom of darkness for personal gain. In addition, attacking the people through biochemical warfare. Technology has interrupted most people's ability to distinguish the real from the virtual world of social media. The beast system has nothing to offer the people nor does the beast system have anything that can equal to the promises the Most High made to his people that serve him in the spirit and in truth. Israelites, do not trade your glory for the lesser. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Israelites, weaning off the beast system is not going to be an easy process, nor will it happen overnight. Israelites, this process must start now if we seek to gain our independence from the beast system. The withdrawal process would take time, determination, and unity. To properly exit this from the beast system, good leadership and headship must be established in our households to begin the journey. 
every Israelite must understand we all have a part to play in the resurrection of our nation. The reason it is important to establish a healthy leadership and headship in our households, the Most High has a system in place for his people to follow. If that system is ignored and not abiding by his laws, Yah is not there. Sin will interrupt the Most High's ability to provide, protect, and become his people's only source. The scripture said, sin separate us from the Most High. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Because most Israelite households are missing headship and leadership, the evidence is clear that the kingdom of darkness has successfully infiltrated Israelite homes all over the world, bringing strife, division, and hardship. If the Israelite nation had healthy headship and leadership, our households and communities would display our loyalty to our father. Instead, our communities show division, strife, envy, and jealousy. These characteristics stems from the kingdom of darkness. Israelites who do not understand the importance of proper leadership and headship must ask the most high in prayer to help their understanding. Israelites, if you do not understand how to excel in your role, ask the most high for guidance. The most high wants to help his people succeed. In order for the most high to help, you must ask. The scripture said some have not because they ask not. The scriptures went on to add that some Israelites ask with the wrong motives. Because they are asking with the wrong motives, they do not receive. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Many Israelites make the mistake of asking an Israelite in sin to guide them. One of the biggest mistakes our people do in the awakening is trusting the wrong people. Many Israelites gravitate to the paid agents and workers of iniquity to teach them how to excel in the position the Most High has assigned to them. These workers of iniquity will lead you astray. Israelites, that is why it is important to establish a personal relationship with the Most High. Through that relationship, the Most High becomes your teacher. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you everything that you need to know to prosper in leadership, establishing a healthy headship in your household, and helpmates that will be a good support system. When every member of a household are committed to their role, that household will reflect the Most High. Wherever the Most High place his name, his glory will shine. When the presence of the Most High is shining bright in a household, every member will succeed in everything they do. No weapon that form against that household shall prosper. The Most High will set an edge of protection around that house. Hast not thou made an hedge about him? and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. When we have multiple Israelite households serving the Most High and excelling in their role, the community will be strong. The Most High will bless every household that submit to him. The provision and protection that stems from the Most High will continue to transfer from one generation to the next. When a household and their community is strong, the people striving together become a superpower nation. The enemy will have a difficult time to overthrow that nation in a battle. Whenever our ancestors submit to the Most High, no armies could stand against them. The presence of the Most High was there to defend his people. Our ancestors did not rely on other nations for provision and support when they served the Most High. The Most High was supplying all of their needs. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If Yah be for us, who can be against us? The synagogue of Satan want you to believe you need a massive army of flesh to protect you. In addition, if you do not have the beast system resources and support, you will not prosper. Israelites, what army of flesh in history ever succeeded in defeating the army of the Most High? With him is an arm of flesh, 
but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. You will never hear of an army of flesh defeating an army of spirit. When proper headship and leadership is established in our households, the Most High is there. In order to turn around the chaos in our communities, we need the heads to commit to the household they started. If you do not want to commit, do not seek a helpmate to establish an abominable household that disgraced the Most High. If any Israelite is not ready to fulfill their duty and role, do not seek a wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, side chick, and husband. Do not try to redefine your role to please your flesh. Redefining your role is not going to help you escape accountability. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the Most High called Adam and said, where are you? Yah did not say, Adam and Eve, where are you? Yah questioned Adam first. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Eve was held accountable for her sins. The Most High did not ignore Eve's disobedience. Yah judged her accordingly. However, when dealing with proper leadership and headship, the Most High will deal with the matter according to the hierarchy he established for the family. To every head of a household, it is imperative that you understand you are responsible for your communities and households. Running from your responsibilities will not excuse you from the judgment of the Most High, regardless to what the helpmate is doing. Headship is not an easy role. The one who hold that title carry the responsibility. The Most High would not have given the man the role if he did not determine he could handle it. It is because you have the natural skills needed to succeed in your role that the Most High gave you the headship responsibility. Just like the Most High said, it is best for the females to give birth. Every female has the natural born skills needed to excel in her role. The kingdom of darkness is influencing the male and female to give up on their responsibilities and transfer the headship and leadership to the kingdom of darkness. You must silence the strange voices that is discouraging you. Submit to the Most High and Yah will teach you how to succeed in your role. Israelites, you were born to lead. When you make the decision to be fruitful and multiply, you should take your time to find a partner. While you are waiting, seek the Most High for help. There are severe consequences when you turn your back on the family and community. Our nation is suffering because many Israelites refuse to take their place and finish what they started. Satan know that if he separate the Israelite male from the Israelite female, he can easily destroy the family. That is why the workers of iniquity target your households, promote everything that brings destruction to the Israelite family. The heathen nations did not obtain dominion over the original people by including them in everything they do. Nor did the heathens seek advice from the indigenous male on how to run this world. The foreign male plotted on how to disarm the original dominant male. The foreign male observed their victims, get to know their enemies by befriending them. While the original people let their guards down, the foreign male attacked the indigenous people and stole their dominion. History support how the foreign male travel all over the world and colonize the nations they conquered. While the indigenous man invite his enemy to break bread with him, his enemy took the leadership position from the original man. Presently, Israelites wants to include heathens in everything they do. Some Israelites forgot that they live among their enemies. The same way the invading male took the leadership and headship from the indigenous male, the original man needs to take the leadership and headship back. Nobody's going to hand over the leadership role to the indigenous male. The original men have to go to battle to gain the crown. Battling and spiritual warfare is not a foreign language for us. Israelites been battling their entire life. You were born on a battlefield. Let me repeat, you were born and raised on a battlefield. In order to subdue the foreign male, you're going to need the support of the Most High. Remember, the invading male will attack you with an army of flesh. When the original men submit to the Most High, you gain power from the armies of the Most High, an army of spirit. Remember, no army of flesh has ever defeated the army of the Most High. The original male needs to awaken the sleeping lion and have a mindset like King David when he stepped up to fight Goliath. Then said David to the Philistine, 
Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. King David was unbothered by the useless Nephthalim giant that stood in front of him. You should not let the false power the heathen male has fool you. They fear you because they know if you remember how to align yourself with the power that is within, their reign has ended. For multiple generations, the foreign male have successfully subdued the original man. In the mix of this so-called crisis the kingdom of darkness created should open the eyes of many Israelites to free themselves from the beast system. Align yourself with the Most High to receive protection and provision from the Most High. It is only when the people of the Most High humble themselves and serve the Most High with a pure heart, the change will come. Too many Israelites serve the Most High with their lips and their hearts are far from the Most High. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You have to let go of religion and man-made rules and trust your Elohim. The kingdom of darkness do not like when we start to obtain a mindset where we want to separate from the beast system. When you renew your mind, you obtain power from the Most High. Satan will send workers of iniquity to discourage you and to frustrate you. Israelites, you must understand this will take place and prepare yourself for the battle. Spiritual warfare must take place in order to elevate. Any Israelite that is submitted to the Most High gain access to unstoppable power. The Most High said he has given us power over the entire kingdom of darkness and by no means could they hurt you. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. If you can meditate on Luke 10 and 19 and understand the power the Most High made available to those who walk uprightly, the beast system do not stand a chance. We cannot allow the beast system to overshadow what the Most High desire for his people. Israelites, do not accept what the beast system is offering you. It is time to make our exodus from the beast system. In the process of our withdrawal, we have to learn to separate from the Israelite tares among us. Do not focus on the wicked of our people. Many of our people will side with the beast system. We cannot let their decisions affect us. We must continue to pursue the Most High and ask Yah to lead us on a path to everlasting life. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Some Israelites will entertain the negative thoughts of this will be too hard or it's too late for us. Once you learn to cast down the wicked imaginations that rise against the knowledge of Yah, you will hear the voice of the Most High. The Most High will teach you how to triumphant over your enemies. Do not entertain negative energy. Rise above it. Israelites, the scripture said that we will succeed in returning to serving the Most High. This should encourage you to start seeking the Most High with all of your heart. It is up to you to decide what direction you want to go. When you side with the Most High, you will overcome every single dart the enemy throw at you. Israelites, Choose this day to separate from the beast system and serve the Most High. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid.